Hey guys, as requested, I'm going to review the video called Don't Trust Influencers, Andrew Tate is Fake by the channel Tech Lead. All right, so we need to talk. Do not trust influencers, such as me, such as anybody else out here. A lot of young people these days are feeling lost from all the influencers on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram. And the real reason is because you're surrounded by a bunch of snake oil salesmen. All of us out here are pretty much selling you the next get rich quick scheme. We're telling you why you're not enough, why you will never be enough. We are getting you to care about really useless things like politics that are truly above your pay grade. And we're presenting this totally fake vision of the world where it seems like people are just traveling and flying around on private jets, driving Lamborghinis all the time when that is all rented, basically. And people don't really... Even if it wasn't rented, it's completely meaningless anyway. It's just man-made metal with wheels. <laughs> There's literally no natural meaning to it whatsoever. It can only make you depressed. You fly private jets all the time. Sure, maybe for some domestic flights, which are cheap anyways. But if you're doing like the A-class trips, going international, maybe you're going off to Asia, Japan, or to Europe, you're probably going to be flying in some massive Boeing 747 simply because the gas cost would even be prohibitively expensive for, for anybody, really. It would just not be worth it. And so it is because of these scumbag influencers and I'm no exception, in fact, I'm quite the internet guru myself, that young people these days just have no comprehension of what the real world actually looks like and what it means to do some work. So I'm here to set this story straight for you guys. Now, first up, Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate has misled an entire generation of young men and women, quite frankly. Wow, yes, I absolutely agree. Frankly, I mean, this whole talk about masculinity and muscles, you know, muscles are going to make you live a shorter life, actually. It's going to shorten your lifespan. I mean, this is just... <laughs> Wow, the first guy I've heard say this, I don't know if ever, but for sure in a very long time. I don't know anybody else who really talks about this topic besides me. There's probably been some people, there are some studies, some books, some lectures which prove that running causes heart disease, but he is the first one who actually has some kind of influence. He has over a million subscribers, I think. Science, But if you want to live longer, healthier, and really happier, then you don't want all these huge bulging muscles that are just going to take so many human resources. To exactly. You don't want that because nobody naturally wants that. And that's because we are not built like that naturally. Humans are quite lean. We are hunter-gatherers, scavengers. We are good at throwing setting traps we mostly hunt by using our brain but we are not at all built like a bodybuilder naturally which is why you need to work for it so much you need to build your body as in destroy it and destroy your health your longevity to actually try to achieve this incredibly unnatural and unhealthy physique it's very nice to hear this to manage and maintain it's going to work your cells really to death and it is really exactly it literally kills your cells and creates free radicals every time you work out it's one of the most stressful things you could possibly do actually his brother tristan tate recently said to andrew that working out is not something that humans would do in nature that we are actually built to be lean i should be a much bigger than i even am think about it four years Never missed a day training ever once. Should have just grown and grown and grown to the Incredible Fucking Hulk. Humans aren't supposed to grow muscle. That's why losers take steroids. Humans aren't meant to grow up muscle. They're meant to be slim. Because of Instagram culture and people such as Andrew Tate who are so visual, you know, there was this guy Liver King who had like all these health issues. These people get on steroids and they attract a bunch of followers. Exactly, they attract slaves. He knew that he looks like a freak. He paid Google and other advertising companies a lot of money to promote him so that he always shows up in your search engine, so that he always gets suggested to you. But the problem with these people is that they have nothing at all worthy to say. Just because it is a visual platform. And so what happens is you see all these muscle men on social media. And for the women, maybe it's the anorexic types. And before you know it, you have young men starting to take testosterone replacement therapy. Yes, exactly. It's incredibly unhealthy. And these men get brainwashed to believe that women are into that, even though in reality, you only attract other men with these unnatural physiques. Somebody like Liver King could have done something good. He could have promoted eating raw animal organs. If he wouldn't have used steroids, then other men could have gotten into this natural way of eating. They would have actually naturally boosted their testosterone. And even if they wanted to work out and destroy their bodies, at least they would have done it in a more natural way. Not that you can do bodybuilding in a natural way, but at least they would have had natural levels of these hormones. But he was just promoting drug use. TRT 
in order to try to bulk themselves up even more, you got people going on steroids. And what happens is your own body stops producing your own testosterone. And so exactly that's why your testicles shrink. Really what's going on here is now you have young men starting to inject themselves with the testosterone of other men. And that helps their own testosterone production because they want to be like these other people. And uh, it's like they're injecting Andrew Tate's testosterone into themselves, basically, because they want... Most of the stuff is synthetic, but you get what he means. ...want to be exactly like him. So they want to be like these influencers riding these private jets with a hundred women. And that's a vision which doesn't really actually exist in real life. And I'll get to that. But you've also got... Young it doesn't exist and it also shouldn't exist. You have achieved literally zero in your life. If you simply have some, uh, you know what, uh, kind of women around you. <laughs> if anything, it proves that you're an absolute loser because you don't have a family, which is the peak of masculinity. It's the biggest achievement a man can have. A woman with a lot of children. Some people starting to take up kickboxing or jujitsu and uh, you're going to get brain damage from that, quite frankly. Like, I think Andrew Tate actually has... Actually, that's really true. <laughs> wow. I really like this guy. A number of serious health issues that he's had to go to physical therapy for. And you don't want to be like that. Health is wealth. There was another kid who just jumped over a cruise boat this past weekend because he was trying to be some influencer, get viral on social media. Uh, he disappeared, never to be seen again. And you want to know what masculinity is, by the way, for those wondering. If you're a man, you're masculine. By definition, it's a biological idea. Masculinity is just whatever a man is. Now, so Kind of. It's true, naturally. Yes, in nature, every man is masculine, but that's also because they are biochemically masculine. Nowadays, I wouldn't say that Andrew Tate, for example, is not at all masculine. Most of what he does is very feminine. You can tell that he has a lot of estrogen flowing through his blood. Decidedly, you can say, well, you want to be like Arnold Schwarzenegger or the Terminator, but you may be interested to know that also in other countries, like, say, Japan, well, they don't have that concept that a man should be this huge bulging piece of meat. And so funny enough, in Japan, I don't think people like Andrew Tate would be popular at all, quite frankly. They want kind of the slender macho type. It's called hoso macho, and there's a bunch of different types. So maybe people want kind of the slender, muscular, singing, dancing type of person with cool looking hair, and Andrew Tate doesn't have hair. It's just a totally different stereotype of what is considered popular or masculine in other countries. Whereas in the West... He's gonna trigger Andrew Tate if he sees that. Better watch out. And you want to be careful not to make any permanent life-altering changes to yourself, especially if you end up in Asia somewhere. The image standards are just going to be different. So there's a lot of social media brainwashing going on these days. You know, uh, you don't really need physical violence, by the way. Like Japan is also pretty brainwashed, just in a different way. The ability to fight people. If there's violence, just run. Just get out of there. And the other option... Yes, I agree. Usually you should run away if some uh, drunk guys are starting a fight. Nobody's gonna win there. And it's just call the police or maybe take out your phone, record the confrontation and sue the other person later on for physical assault. You'll probably win the case. Yeah, but that's again a slave weak mentality. Whenever there's a problem, just call the police always. No, deal with the problems. You don't have to involve the police every time any little thing happens. Case, get a bunch of money that way or you know what? You could just buy a gun as well. Guns seem to solve everything. Like if the person has a black belt and 20 years of experience in martial arts, uh, the gun is still going to beat this person in America, at least. Exactly. If you live in the US or any other country where guns are allowed, such as Turkey, then absolutely protect yourself with a gun at all times. And so the fact is, all these social media characters you see running around the online portraying these fantasy lives, showing you their highlight reels, are not actually living real lives, necessarily. Like, people like Andrew Tate, they're fictional personas, quite frankly. Like, he seems to never be wrong. And, you know, it's like, uh, a lot of the stuff he does is... Oh, that's interesting that he says that. I haven't actually seen Andrew Tate ever admit that he's wrong about anything. Maybe he has done that, but it says a lot about him. Because I've listened to quite a few of uh, his talks, interviews actually super cheap lately. Like he lives in Romania. You could live in a mansion in Romania for pretty cheap, probably. Less than a million dollars, probably. You could rent all the cars you want there. It's not going to be very expensive. You can get bottle service at clubs. You can own a casino. It would all be pretty cheap in a country like that. It's like a third world country. It's like, I could go to Thailand and do the same thing for like $10,000, probably. Now, that's not to downplay his success, but I think you have to take what he says with a grain of salt. And while we're on this topic, let me just give you my take on Andrew Tate, which is, I think he's a fictional persona, and a lot of the women he surrounds himself with are actually just his employees from his webcam business. So my take is he doesn't actually have... Well, yeah, that's true. That's not a secret. Fancy cars, fancy watches, when in reality, like a lot of these status symbols only cover up insecurities inside. And, you know, the fastest car is basically like what, some electric car, like a Tesla or something like you. Don't that's very true. You wouldn't need any of these things if you were actually fulfilled and uh, secure. 
it really does show insecurity when you need to especially flash all of those things. I don't need a $500,000 Lambo and the best watch, probably like an Apple watch. Those old Rolexes and Timexes are made to show off on social media. That's almost their exclusive purpose. And so what's happened is social media has misled an entire- Yeah, for real. Who the hell uses a watch actually nowadays? They are completely useless. There are some people out here who are the real deal. People such as myself, I mean, we're pretty, we're pretty up there. Okay, but you shouldn't be comparing yourself with people like me. Like if you're like here, I'm like, I'm like up here, like near the light of success, like just pretty up there. Okay, but the reality is there's nothing to even- I wonder what he means. I don't know this channel, so I have no idea who he is or what he has achieved. He has a lot of screens around him. By the name, I assume that it is some kind of tech channel. That's obviously also not an achievement, just like Andrew Tate hasn't really achieved anything. Funnily enough, a guy like this who sits at the computer most of the day, I assume that that's what he does. Even if he eats absolute garbage, he's going to live a lot longer than anybody who works out, goes to the gym, does bodybuilding, exercises in any way at all. So the funny thing is when I was growing up, nobody talked or cared about politics. Actually, it was something older people ranted about on the radio, but most normal people would just say, yeah, they don't get that stuff. It was the cool thing to say. Whereas these days, it seems we're in some social media phase where everybody is riled up over some controversy or manufactured political outrage. And you are truly just wasting so much time on this because you have absolutely no impact on this whatsoever, quite frankly, right? Like it's, it's not going to really affect you that much and you don't have much effect on this. Personally for me, I no longer find myself caring about so many any of these issues and you could probably just spend your time playing games or working on some project instead so overall when it comes to social media i think the actual <laughs> answer lies his advice is funny but uh, it is better than saying go work out go run go lift some man-made metal it's way healthier to sit all day and play video games compared to somebody who goes to the gym and is obsessed with destroying his body by doing bodybuilding, for example. So even though I don't actually agree with his advice, obviously, it's still a lot better than the advice of most of these so-called influencers, yeah. Somewhere between reality and fantasy, and take everything people say with a grain of salt. Most people are trying to sell you something online. The advice you hear, take it more as food for thought, something to think about, but make your own decisions about them at the end of the day. Understand that you're under massive brainwashing, living in a society surrounded by snake oil salesmen. And in my opinion, it is pretty hard to beat just a basic, peaceful, settled life, having a coffee, playing some video games, Diablo 4 coming out soon, that's hard to beat. Okay, even a Lambo can't beat that. And then just taking some family vacations, that may be about- I haven't played a video game in uh, 14 years, maybe, approximately. But again, <laughs> Playing uh, Diablo 4 is a lot better than uh, all of these influencers nowadays telling you to hit the gym. It's literally 10 times healthier to sit at home playing video games. So still, his advice is bad, but it's so much better than most of the advice from these losers. As good as it gets. So that's it for me. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. See you there. See you in the next one. Thanks. Bye. Okay, I haven't read the comments on his video, but I would assume that a lot of people got triggered. And that's because people don't want to hear the truth, especially nowadays. They get really offended by the truth. And he said some things which are not allowed to be said nowadays. As I said, I don't agree with him overall, obviously. But what he said is at least a lot healthier than what all of the other influencers are saying. Thanks for watching.